previously, but we'll also go through the origin insertions of those again as well. Okay. And then there's also this anconius, it's kind of like a wannabe muscle. You know, it's not really, it doesn't really do that much of an action, but it is an elbow extensor, and we'll go over that as well. Okay, so now we'll review again. We talked before about the biceps brachii. And that's a muscle that crosses the shoulder. Maybe remember where that long head is. Well, we talked about the long head. That one is on the superglenoid tuberosity, which is part of the glenoid fossa. Okay. But then the short head is going to come off of what's this over here? Remember, it's part of the scapula? It's like a beak. Corticoid process. And we'll see, uh, we've got a video of the uh, biceps trachea that you'll see in just a minute. And then this long head is going to run through the shoulder joint. And then it's going to insert into the uh, radial tuberosity. Okay. And then the corticoid process is here. And then again, those two come together and they insert into that radial tuberosity. Okay. So this is kind of review of what we talked about before. But again, we'll see a video to see the, the brachial, I mean the biceps brachial. So its action is going to be to flex the elbow and then also to do supination. So now we have the, bra the brachialis and the brachioradialis. So brachialis, again, comes from the word brachium, which is the upper arm. Right? So it's going to come off of the humerus. And then the brachial radialis is going to cross farther down along the radius. And we'll see those muscles in this room. So here's the brachialis, and yeah, we need to plug the speakers in just give me one minute. going to be the brachial radialis. And then now we're going to see a little bit of a video from that. But basically it's going to come from the distal lateral humerus. It's a little bit farther up. It's not necessarily the supercondylar ridge. It comes up fairly high up on here. Okay, so it's coming way up on here. And then it's going to go across 
to the distal stylus. Okay, that's my extra word. Okay. <laughs> All right. And I don't think it's going to work to keep turning the lights on and off, so we'll just have to leave them on the watch these. The last of the three elbow flexes is brachio radialis. It arises halfway up the humerus, just below the deltoid tuberosity. It's inserted all the way down here on the distal radius. Brachio radialis is an efficient flexor of the elbow, whether the forearm is pronated or supinated. The last of the three elbow flexors is brachio radialis. It arises halfway up the humerus, just below the deltoid tuberosity. It's inserted all the way down here on the distal radius. Brachio radialis is an efficient flexor of the elbow, whether the forearm is pronated or supinated. Okay. So, what was the other thing you were saying about the um Mechanical advantages. Oh, it said um, when the forearm is pronated, the radial radialis is more active during elbow flexion since the biceps consists of biceps brachius. Yeah, the biceps functions better in, in flexion of the elbow when it's like this, when it's supinated. So, like when you do push up or pull ups like this, you can do better usually this way than you can this way because the biceps is more stretched. It can like shorten that. It will go up here. It will come from that side. Okay. Maybe I cut the, I should have shoved, I had kept more of the humerus in on that drawing there. Um, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but you can draw in a little bit more. Um, and then the thing is, like here, if you're doing muscle testing for the brachioradialis, what you can do is, is hold like this, and then can resist contraction this way. And you can see that muscle that pops up right there. It might be easier if you do it with the with the person next to you. But if you're so it's an elbow flexor, but this is neutral position between pronation and supination, right? So if you have your thumb up like this, and you're moving this way. That's the brachioradialis that pops up right there. Okay, so it's if it's on the top of the forearm like that. If I'm if I'm supinated, what's it going to do? It's going to bring it back to neutral. If I'm pronated, what's it going to do? It's going to bring it back to neutral. So it tends to bring the hand back into neutral halfway between pronation and supination. So that's why when you're saying it functions either as a supinator or a pronator, depending on which way that the hand is. And if it's supinated, it's going to be a pronator, but only to the midpoint. If it's pronated, it's going to be a supinator, but only to the, mid, to the middle portion. And then, if you note, if you look in the beginning part of the notes, it says that wherever you see a little special bracket like that, that means you don't have to know that for tests, okay? If you just say that it's the distal lateral humerus, that's good enough. But technically, if you see it in books, that's the way it's in the textbook. So that's extra information. It has those special little brackets in there. You don't need to know that for exam or test. Okay. As long as you understand that it's the distal lateral humerus, and that it's going to do this motion here. And it goes to the distal radius. Okay. 